in 2023. Well, you're still here. Huh? Tell your neighbor, say, you're still here. You're still, you're still here. And I assure you, it's not because you did everything perfectly all year long. It's the goodness of God. It's the mercy of God. It's the kindness of the Lord. Because of His mercies, we are not consumed. Well, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see you got something to wear. I see you, you, you got, you've been having something to eat. You got, got a place to stay. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. thank you, Lord. And are we thankful for our country, the United States of America? Oh, I know it's not perfect, but I don't know how much traveling you've done, but we have a lot to be thankful for. There's still a lot of places in the world where you would be arrested for doing what we're doing right now. Just coming together like this and exalting Jesus and preaching the gospel put you in jail. And we got freedom here. I said we got freedom. We got freedom. Freedom to worship God, praise God, preach the word. Send the word to other places. Oh, somebody say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Just like the psalmist said, if it had not been for the Lord, I would have fallen. And when I got back up, I would have perished. But he has sustained me. Woo! We were singing, he's done so much for me, I, I can't tell it all. Is that you? I can't tell it all. One more time, lift your hands up and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining us. This year and all the years before it, getting us to this place. And we know that the same good God that got us this far will take us the rest of the way. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, smile at somebody close by and let them know that you're glad to be in church with them on a New Year's Eve. And that it's a great place to be. Oh, happy day. We made it through. Yes, it's the end of the year. Glory to God. Do we have anybody here at church for the very first time closing out this year? Yes, yeah, stand up if you want to. Welcome, 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 welcome. You know, in here we want you to stand up because our people want to help pay off your cars, pay off your houses, buy you groceries, buy you clothes. Take you to dinner. See, they're not laughing anymore like they used to. Because <laughs> they've learned when they pay off yours, God takes care of theirs. And we're learning lots these days. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let's welcome everybody watching out there on the Internet today or on Roku or YouTube or all over the globe. We are so blessed to have you joining us today. We know there's lots of places you could be looking at, but you know it's the end of the year. And we should be looking at getting in someplace and serving. And we know you could be 
serving someplace because it's different times every place all over the globe. We've got some pastor friends that watch us out in California, then they go preach. So, um, yeah. So they could be watching and, and then going, doing what they are supposed to be doing. So uh, we love you. Wave to them. Say, we love you. Love you. Yeah. You, they didn't even look at your face. They only see the back of your heads. But we do. We love you. All right. Anyway, the offices will be closed tomorrow, January the 1st. So you know it's a legal holiday and people get sticky about those. How many of you are off tomorrow? See? There you go. That's all we have to say about that. All right. And then we have been announcing Brother Nathaniel Bassey. I've got some disturbing news. He didn't get all of his paperwork done. They are not, you know, haven't, I guess they were all on vacation in the government offices too. So uh, we've had to postpone that. So he is still coming though. So we'll let you know exactly when. So don't give out on him. Be believing with him. All right. So uh, all that gets situated and we'll let you know exactly when he's able to come. So uh, stay hooked with him and he will be here. All right. So uh, we are expecting. How many of you are expectors? All right. We're expecting. So uh, they'll be taking it off the screens and off the Internet until we get an exact date of when he'll be able to be here. But he will be here. So keep expecting with us. Well, any birthdays or anniversaries? This I didn't get last week, so the last two weeks and the next week. All right? Stand up if you want to. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. How many? Three. Congratulations, guys. Daniel, how many? Birthdays. You're 22? 24. All right. I took a good guess. Robert, happy birthday. 14. <laughs> Congratulations. And we got a 50 back here. <coughs> Congratulations. There was another birthday over here I missed and a birthday back here. I missed somebody over here. All right. Back there. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary, 26. 26, hi there. Hi there. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Birthdays back there? Teen boys. Birthdays, all right. All right, are we missing anybody in the back? Happy birthday back there? Is that birthdays? No, they're just waiting to come up front and see us. All right, come. They're pointing at somebody back here. Oh, birthday. Young lady birthday. All right. Happy birthdays. Anybody up here? Let's see, Branson. All of our kids are in here with us today, so the kids are short. I can't see all them for their birthdays. 19. Congratulations. And right next to them is a 45. Congratulations. 33. Woo. Let's keep going. Happy birthday. Is that happy birthday? Another happy birthday. Oh, jumping up behind him. Happy birthday to Usher. Oh, here's, oh, 20, tw wait, 25? Anniversary, 25. I'm lost. <laughs> Not really. There's somebody standing up way in the back. Is that a birthday? By the doorway, happy birthday. Wait, in the front, did we get everybody? Okay. Everybody, are we missing anybody? Woo, woo. <laughs> Our train's going by. I think we got everybody. Well, happy birthday and happy anniversary. If we missed anybody and out there on the internet, happy birthday, happy anniversary. It's a great time. We need to stand up and kick the devil. We had some 51, you know? A lot of people don't make it to 50. So let's just go ahead and kick the devil, yeah. He can't have our marriages. He can't have our lives. And, and we're going to serve him all the days of our lives. Glory to God. Well, I wanted to do something today. I wrote a couple of things down. I wanted to take just a minute because I'm very thankful. And I put Branson on the screen too so we can see him at the same time. And I wanted to take just a minute and be thankful for our teams in here. I wanted to thank everybody and I know some of these are staff, every one of our overseers of a team. If you're an overseer of a team, stand up for me if you would, please. 
overseers of our teens. Yes, overseers of teens. Okay, keep standing. If you're a captain of a team, keep stand up. Captains of teams. Stand up. Co-captains of teams, stand up. It takes work to sometimes keep up with all these teams and call all these people and do all the things that needs to be done. So I'm thankful for all these people. Keith and I can't do all this and do everything else that we do. So we're very thankful for these people. Keep standing. Now, if you serve on one of these teams, stand up. Look at this. Look at this. We are very thankful. Very, 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 very thankful for each and every one of you. Because you know what? Keith got up this morning and worked on his sermon. And I was able to do these things and do other things and get ready and talk with Devin about some other stuff we need to be preparing for. And we didn't have to do your jobs. Oh, it's so great. But you know what? Everything that Keith prepared for this morning, his sermon and everybody that would get saved and everything that would happen, and even the sermon that he preached on TV this morning. How many of you saw that? Even that sermon, you'll get reward for because you were in here and you helped to get prepared for that day when he preached that sermon. So pat your neighbor on the back, hug some of them. Some of them might need a hug today. Yeah, let's take just a minute and do that. It's a great day. We can take just a minute and do that. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Because we could not... And the camera guys, don't forget then. Somebody go over there and pat them on the shoulders. Because they can see how beautiful Keith is when he gets up here. They make him look good. You know, they got all those filters and stuff these days. Look at him. Is he laughing? No, he's not laughing. Uh, then I won't look over there. <laughs> no, they make me look good. Yeah, I tell Devin, Devin, uh, some days I'll say, Devin, don't you zoom in on me today. Don't you do it, you know. Your job depends on it. Don't you do it. <laughs> he's such, they're, they're, him and Sean, they're, they're the best, you know. And so they're directing. And so all the camera guys have some control, but they, they can fix it up there. So anyway, but I have a couple of th more things that I wanted to do today. <laughs> Robert's laughing at me over here. He's an employee. He's been with us 20-something years, so he can laugh at me. He'll still get paid. All right. <laughs> Anyways. I wanted us to be thankful about a couple of more things, and a different, little bit different and unusual than what we usually do. How many of you had a job this year? Stand up. You know, there's a lot of people this year that didn't have jobs. How many of you got paid this year? Look at that. Let's see Branson. Right, let's keep Branson on the screen for a bit, Deb. There you go. How many of these people had jobs and got paid? You know, there's a lot of people living on the streets. How many of you have seen people living on the streets and don't have jobs? Let's thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We had jobs and we had money. How many of you paid your bills this year? How many of you didn't have to move out of your house this year? I'm thankful for that. Are you thankful for that? How many of you actually... You can be seated. How many of you actually got ahead this year? Got ahead this year. I got a couple of other things. How many of you kids have kids? Let's start with that. How many of your kids pass to the next grade? You should be thankful for that. You know what? You should be thankful. There's a lot of people's kids that dropped out of school this year. Didn't even go to school this year. Beat up the teacher this year and got kicked out of school. We should be thankful for our kids. Instead of coming down on our kids all the time, we should be thankful for the kids that we've got. And appreciate what God's given us. How many of your kids were on the honor roll this year? Look at that. Look at hands everywhere. Hands everywhere. You should be thankful for that. 
All right? How many of you had family that got saved this year? Family that got saved. Look at, hand, raise your hands up high. Raise your hands up high so people can see. Look at, look at let's see Branson. Right? Wave your hands in Branson. It's hard to see. Just wave them. Yes, yeah, see, they're waving their hands all over the place. Family that got saved this year. That's worth something. If you had family that got saved this year. All right. How many of you actually grew in the things of God this year? Look at the hands. You know what that means? You didn't backslide and go the way of the devil this year. Do you know there's a lot of people in the world that's going backward and going the way of the world and backsliding? We didn't do that. We should be thankful for that. We should be very thankful for that. You can, you can always find things to be thankful for. Instead of waking up and just saying, ho-hum, we've got to be thankful for the things that are going on in our lives. How many of you still have a spouse? Huh? How many of you are still married? Raise your hand. Branson, I don't see you. How many of you are still married? How many of your spouse is still in their right mind, or mostly still in their right mind? You should be thankful. You should be thankful. Because there's a lot of people out there that's had Alzheimer's or had problems or just woke up one morning and just left their spouse and went crazy. We should be thankful. We've got a lot of things to be thankful for. And the more thankful that you are, the more the Lord can do for you. I think we ought to just stand up. You know, a lot of times we say, how many of you got a car and how many of you got a house? But there's a lot more things to be thankful for than just that. How many of you are well enough to be here in church this morning? You should be thankful for that. Maybe you do have a few aches and pains, but you were well enough to get up and get here this morning. And we should be thankful for those things instead of grumble, grumble, gripe, gripe. So let's stand up and be thankful for the things that we do have. Thank you, Lord, that you've kept us this year. Thank you, Lord, that you've kept our kids this year. Thank you, Lord, that you've kept our families this year and our spouses this year. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. These are the best testimonies, Lord, that you've kept us. And we don't have to be believing that you pull us out of something, Father, but that you kept us from anything bad happening, Father. We thank you for these things, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your goodness to us and for sparing us from all the evil that's in the world, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I won't give you all the testimonies. To me, that's some great testimonies, don't you think? All right. You can be seated. Here comes Keith. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Yeah, the Bible said, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. What's the will of God? That you and I be given thanks all the time in every situation. You know, I say sometimes uh, in everything, what does that mean? In your pajamas, in the kitchen, in the front yard, right? In the office, in the car, in everything, do what? Give thanks. I had the Lord speak something to my heart years ago. I don't mean I heard an audible voice, but inside me distinctly, he said, Keith, would you like to know how to increase your capacity to receive from me? You know how long it took me to answer that? (laughs) I said, yes, yes, and please, yes. He said, cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Every one of those words significant. Cultivate means it's not going to happen automatically. 
you're going to have to make an effort to do it. A lifestyle means you don't just do it on Sunday morning right. when somebody's right. leading you. That's lifestyle is every day of your life. Right. Uh, cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving, thanksgiving. giving thanks all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every good thing that you see the Lord has done for you and is doing for you, go ahead. Don't just be silent about it. Open your mouth you, and go ahead and thank say, you, thank, thank you, Lord. 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 And don't be embarrassed if somebody hears you right. say it. Is that right? That's if they right. think something's odd about it, they're the ones whose understanding is deficient. Right. They need to be doing it too. Yes. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go with me, please, to Matthew, the, the sixth chapter. It's offering time. And I guess this will be the last Sunday morning offering of 23. And a lot of times into the year, people's minds turn towards the new year and the future. And what about 24? How will it go? What will happen? Well, God doesn't change. And His Word doesn't change. And uh, when it comes to your finances, Phyllis and I have been in the ministry. We've been, uh, soon have been married uh, in a couple of months, 47 years. And uh, been in the ministry, been in the ministry, what, like 42 of that? And so, um, so thankful for that, but we know specifically when our financial life turned around. Because even after we got into ministry, we weren't doing well financially. And I know, I know exactly when we started turning around, and it had to do with the verse I'm about to read to you. When we got the revelation and made the commitment to put God first in our finances. Yep. And so if I had one word of encouragement and counsel for you today, that's it. Do you want your finances to be good in 24 and beyond? Then you must make the quality decision and commitment to put God. First. Not, not a church, not a ministry, God. Right. Come on, did you hear that? Yeah. Put God first in every area of your life, including your finances. Right. Yes. Does that sound right to anybody? Yes. It, you, you, if you want God to be fully involved in your finances, there is no alternative. That You have to do that. And you don't have to do it, but if you want Him involved, That's right. you got to do it. And Phyllis, are we glad that we did, that we meant, oh... He has done exceeding abundantly above for us anything we ever thought back then. Oh, God is so good. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. But I can see it distinctly. That's when things started to turn around for us is when we got that revelation and we made that commitment to put God first. In, in Matthew, the sixth chapter, and verse 31, and, and this is the Amplified. Let's read it today, the Amplified. Matthew 6, 31, Amplified, says, Therefore, do not worry and be anxious. Now, you'll have to do that too. Huh? Right. About what? Saying, what are we going to have to eat? What are we going to have to drink? What are we going to have to wear? Somebody says, well, you know, what's wrong with that if you're conscientious and concerned? It's unbelief. It's lack of trust in God. The more scared you are, the less faith you have in God. Hmm? Is it okay to worry and fret? Will I be able to pay my bills? You know, we'll be able to make our rent. We'll be able to do this. Now, if you're doing that, you're not, you're not in, in faith. You're not trusting God, no matter what you say or how much you come to church. If you're worrying all the time, that's not faith. That's right. That's right. Faith doesn't worry. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I didn't say you wouldn't be tempted to. 
<laughs> but you got to resist the temptation, Amen. right? Yeah. Got to cast it down. Say it out loud. Faith, Faith doesn't, doesn't worry. worry. So I, so I don't, don't worry, worry. Because, because I, I trust, trust God. God. I trust him to do what? To take care of me. Now you need to check in with him. We're going to be talking about that. You need to follow him. You need to listen to him. And there's other, you have a part to play, but if you just, you know, make an effort to follow him, he will take care of you. He will take care of you. And that's what he's saying here. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. And don't ask questions like that. So all through 2024, we don't want to hear you saying, am I going to make it? Will I be able to pay this? Will I be able to get to Where am I going to get this? And how am I going to make it through this? It's not okay to talk that way. Hmm? How do you talk, faith people? Help me out. How, how, how do you talk instead? That's it. My God shall supply. Right? That's how you talk. That's how you talk. Even when your head has, doesn't have a clue, that's how you talk. Verse 32. For the Gentiles, the heathen, that's how they talk. They, they wish and crave and diligently seek all these things and, and they worry night and day. That's, that's acting like an unsaved person. You're not an unsaved person. Your heavenly father knows well that you need all these things. He, know, he already knows better than you know what you need and what you're going to need. And he's already got it set up. He doesn't have to figure it out. He is, he is not puzzled by where it might come from. <laughs> so if he knows... I can relax. Amen. Is that right? If he knows, I can relax because he knows. Mm -hmm. Somebody said he knows. He knows. He knows. He know. Your father knows. Yes. And sometimes people say, well, I, you know, maybe we don't need it. You know, I, I, maybe I don't know. The, the Bible said, he, Jesus said, your father knows you do need it. That's right. That's right. He knows well that you need all these things. You need some stuff down here. Yeah. Right? And your father knows you need it. Yes. Keep going. But here's what you do. What do I do instead of worry? Seek seek first. First. You seek first. first. Not second, not third. First. Hmm? First. You don't get paid. Pay your bills. Nope. Go party, go shopping. And then see if you got anything left to give. That's right. Nope. That's not how you do it. Nope. You have violated the first principle of prosperity. Hmm? When you get paid, when you get money, first, off the top, before you do anything, hmm? before you do anything, off the top, what we do is our tithes and our offerings come right off the top. We separate that from our money and that goes in our God account. Well, that's his money. Yes, it is. We don't spend that on us. That goes on his things. And so seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what will happen for you? What will happen for you? All these things taken together will be given you besides. That's abundance. That's surplus. That's overflow. Is that going to happen for everybody? No, it's not. Who's it going to happen for? Those? Well, you if. <laughs> if you make the commitment to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Otherwise, it won't happen for you. Even if you say it will, it won't happen for you if you don't do this. Seek first. Somebody say first, first, first. first. Not second, not third, 
Not after you've done all your other financial stuff, check and see if you can give anything. That's, that's, not, that's not putting him first. Put him first. Take care of his things first. Then he'll help you take care of your things. That's the way it works. Verse 34. So, saying it again, do not worry. Don't be anxious about 2024. Which is exactly tomorrow. Is that right? Huh? Don't be. Huh? Look at your neighbor. Help him out and say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Mm -mm. Now you tell him, say, okay. <laughs> okay. Don't worry about it. Now I know that's easier said than done. Thoughts and feelings will come to you. But you must not just sit there and, and let them st sit on you. Cast them off. Get your mind on something else. Is that right? Yes. Don't, don't let it sit on you. Don't worry or be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. Don't borrow on tomorrow. <laughs> Live free today. Hallelujah. Live happy today. Somebody say praise God. Amen. Well, we don't have any reports. The offices, uh, the financial parts are closed and that kind of thing. And so we won't talk about that. But everything can go to general today. And, and as you know, a big portion of our general goes outside of our walls. It goes to uh, uh, mission work and other ministries. We we're just talking with some of our friends uh, um, just a couple of days ago about some outstanding mission work down in Papua New Guinea. And... Uh, Boy, you talk about mission work. 70% of the country still doesn't have electricity. Now that's mission work. Amen. Yeah? But the gospel's going in. Hallelujah. Amen. And ministries are being birthed. And the churches are being started. And we, I'll be talking to you more about it. We're going to be a part of it. Hallelujah. Right. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. We already are some, but we're going to be, we're going to be a part of it. Right. Well, uh, uh, ushers, would you come and wait on the people? You want to get involved? And the reason I'm saying that is because part of our regular offerings go into things like that and on an ongoing basis. So you don't have to designate anything. If you're making out a check, make it out to FLC. That stands for Faith Life Church. And you may hear some little ones today because uh, they're in the service with us and that is no problem at all. Amen. Is it? If they're not bothering me, they shouldn't be bothering you. Is that right? Amen. They're not bothering me. It's, uh, it's life. Amen. It's future. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got no babies. You got no future. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. And when they're making noise, they're, they're strong. <laughs> they're alive and well. Is that right? Yes. That's a good strong cry. <laughs> Not a little weak whimper, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you used to cry like that yourself. <laughs> and somebody didn't throw you away. They... <laughs> Praise God. If you want to give online, there's a button you can click on. It says sewing. Text to give is on the screen. Like we said, uh, FLC, if you're writing a check. Phyllis, would you come? please, and bring our offering. And, and uh, when you're ready to, you can stand. And if you're writing, take your time. Finish writing and, and then stand. And, and uh, whether you're giving or not, you can stand with us and worship the Lord. And if you uh, would like to give but you don't have anything, ask the Lord for seed to sow. And watch how quickly He puts some in your hand. Hold up your offering. Hold up your hand. Say it out loud. Father God. Father God. You. Are my, source. are my source. There are many channels, there are many channels but, only but only one source. And because you're my good shepherd, you're my good shepherd I, shall not lack. I shall not lack. I shall not want, shall not want. For, any good thing. for any good thing. But we always, but we always have, abundance have abundance and plenty to give. Plenty to give. Thank, you Thank you for increasing us 
more and more, us and our children, for blessing us big and making us a big blessing to a lot of people, to your glory, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Phyllis and I, as your under-shepherds, by the authority and anointing of the place, we speak over the people as they bring these things now, and we say, be increased, be empowered to prosper and rise up higher and go further in every good thing. We bless you in the name of Jesus, head of the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody say, I am blessed. I am, I am blessed. That's empowered. What's, what's going on in the faith life family we're getting? Say, say it like this, I'm getting. I'm getting. I'm getting, I'm getting my buildings, my lands, my houses, my vehicles, and my equipments. Did you notice there's an S on those words? Plural. Somebody say, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. What was it, 20 some years ago, we started saying that in Branson Church. We had none of this. We didn't own any building. We didn't own any land. We didn't own, uh, you know, and now all of it. And also here and paid for. I'm going to keep saying it. I recommend you say it. So say it out loud. I'm getting it. My buildings, my lands, my houses, my vehicles, and my equipment. Didn't the scripture say the Lord knows you have need of all these things? Things? People can be confused about that and scoff and make fun of us and judge us if they want to, but the Bible is true. And God's a good God. And He wants you to have everything that you need to have to do everything you need to do. And to do it on a high level after a godly sort. Be a good witness. What else is going on? All of our debts are being reduced and eliminated. Now, now they say my debts now. All of my debts are being reduced and being eliminated. The Lord's bringing me into the best shape of my life thus far. So we can have more and do more. What else is going on? God's bringing into my hands seed, even some great big whopper chunk seeds. So I mean, what's a big whopper chunk seed? Well, it varies depending on where you are and what you got, but it's things like paying off a car, helping pay off somebody's house, sewing a car. Is that right? Sewing a house. God does big things too, right? He does all sizes. So uh, when you sow big seeds, what does that set you up for? Is that the end of it? No, a seed sown is not a seed gone. You started something. You didn't, that, that wasn't the end of something. So uh, anything to expect for 2024? Uh, anybody got seed in the ground from 23 and 22? And well, uh, it's about time for you to reap some of that. Is that right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can be seated. Ushers, wait on the people.
Hallelujah. Woo. God is a good God. We're a blessed people. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? For us, this is as bad as it will ever get. <laughs> yeah. This life, what we're dealing with right now, this is as rough and as bad and as hard as it will ever be for us because after this, woo! <laughs> can we make it? Can, can we make it a few more years? And not just survive, we can overcome and have victories and, and take a lot more folks to heaven with us. Father, we thank you. And we all submit ourselves to you and ask for enlightenment and direction and help. Only you know exactly what we need and when and how. And we ask for that. And we ask for the direction into the new year and for the utterance and ears to hear it and heart to receive it and grace to live it and do it in Jesus' name. And we say, Amen. and we say, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. <laughs> I'm, a doer. I'm, a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the Word of God. Word of God. That's the only people who get results. Not just church goers, not just Bible readers, not even just prayers. Come on, are you listening? Only those who actually act on and put into practice the word the Lord gives you, that's the only ones that get results. And that's who? Who is that? Say it again. That's me. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the Word of God. Amen. Then you are, you're one of those that has miracles. You can be seated. Remember that's what uh, uh, Jesus' mother told them at the uh, wedding feast of Canaan, which was the first recorded miracle in Jesus' ministry. What did she tell them? Whatever He says to you, do it and they did, and the water turned into wine. Hallelujah. Well, what do you want to do now? <laughs> well, you're here, you dressed up, combed your hair, and came out. You might as well get the whole thing. Might as well. Go with me, please, to uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter. We're going to find out some things today. Right. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> and in the days to come, we'll find out if you're serious right. about some things with God. And it'll be good if you are. Thank you, Lord. At, at this time of year, like we said earlier, people get to thinking about the future. What about 24? What about the rest of my life? What about the future? Ere 24 has finished, we're told that an estimated 61 million people on the earth who are alive right now will no longer be alive mm. by the end of 24. 61 million people, dying uh, worldwide at a rate of 1.9 per second. Mm. So practically two people every second right. quit breathing, leave their body, and go up or down. Now there's a lot of people who don't believe that. They don't believe that. They think it's the end. You know, I uh, heard somebody talking about 
they were trying to be tough, you know, and they said, ah, you know, living a life of crime. They said, oh, the bullet goes whack and everything goes black. No big deal. How do you know? You ever done it? And see, this is one of the big lies uh, that the devil pushes concerning suicide. You see, a lot, of, a lot of people commit suicide this time of year out of pain and hopelessness. And uh, you can get in a really bad way mentally and emotionally to where you are so tormented, you, you just want it to stop. And you can be so hopeless into thinking, why do I want to live another day in this? I got no future anyway. But all that's assuming that it stops when you die. Right, right. And it doesn't. Things don't stop when you die. You don't cease to exist. These are lies. I, I heard a guy one time tell he decided to commit suicide. He decided to hang himself. And he did. And he died. But somebody found him right, right at the moment that he did. And they got the uh, EMTs there. And they eventually got him back. But his heart was stopped. He was dead for a period of time. But somehow they got him back. Mercy of God. Yeah. And this is what he said. He said, the moment I did it, I regretted it. Wow. He said, in the moment that I died and I'm coming out of my body, I thought, what have I done? What did I? You know, there's a lot of dumb stuff you can do in life, but you live to get over it. Man. But there's some things you do, you can't take back. You can't, you can't fix. And that's killing other people. Or it's killing yourself. You got no right to do that, especially if you're a Christian. Did you ask the Lord if you could do that? If you could hang this body that he paid a price for, you could shoot it or overdose it. I assure you, if you asked him, he told you no. And the Bible says as a believer, we're not our own. Our body's been bought with a price. No, you do not have a right. You do not have a right to damage and destroy this body. It's not your own. And if you're not a believer, how serious is that? Huh? And you die, now you have no more opportunities to receive Christ. And it didn't just cease. The switch didn't just turn off. You're still existing. And where? And you think hell is better than what you were going through here? No, friend. Suicide should never be a consideration. Life is short enough as it is. You will soon be out of here. And taking your own life is being deceived because it does not stop. You don't cease to exist when you stop breathing. You go up or you go down and you're still you. And even if you're a Christian and you made a mistake, well, you don't want to be robbed by life you should have had, by reward you should have. Eternity is a long time, right? Somebody say, I can make it a few more years. <laughs> Right, by, by the grace of God, by the help of God. And let me, let me give you a comparison. When you were a teenager, 12 years old, huh, 13, and that first heartbreak. Oh, God. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. You might have thought you were going to die. Is that right? Oh no, you like them and they don't like you. It's true. 
And you think you can't go on, the pain is too bad, only because of your inexperience. You've never experienced life. You think this is so awful beyond dealing with. But if you only knew the truth, go have an ice cream. <laughs> Take a nap. Is that right? Give it three days. Come on, y'all with me? You know what I'm talking about? Now we know that having survived that age, but do you know it's just as true right now if you're 60 years old or you're 70 years old? It's just as true. It's just a matter of perspective. But the truth is, with God, I can do all things. Is that right? And He always causes me to triumph. It's not time to quit. It's not time to give up. Give God some time. Yes. Give him some opportunity. Give him some time to show you what he can do for you. Yes. And you'll find out he's got even better for you yes. than you thought was the ultimate. He can do way better. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud, I refuse, I refuse to, ever to ever consider suicide. Consider suicide. It's, not it's not an option. I am not my own. I, not my own. I, will trust the Lord, I will trust the Lord and I will follow Him, follow him all, the days of my life. all the days of my life. And He always, and he always causes me to triumph. Me to triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that wasn't in my notes, but that's okay. Well, we're talking about 24. By the end of 24, 61 million people that are alive right now will no longer be with us. And here's the thing, besides those that are still with us, millions and millions of them will have completely wasted their year. Have completely wasted 2024. Including many Christians. Did you find Ephesians 5? Ephesians 5 and 1. He said, Be, there for, be ye therefore followers of God... As dear children, will, will he make you follow? No. 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 That's why he's saying, do it. Skip down to verse 14. Wherefore, he's, uh, he says, awake thou that sleepest and rise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. Do you know even though you are alive spiritually, you can live like spiritually dead people? And if somebody is in a deep, deep sleep, they look like they're dead. There's no movement, there's no motion, there's nothing going on. But arise from the dead, wake up. Wake up to what? Being awake is being aware. Rise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. Keep reading. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Can a Christian, he's writing to the church at Ephesus, which were tongue talkers, born again, talking in tongues, all that. Uh, and he, and he, is he telling them they could walk like a fool? He said, don't do it. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. This is what you want to do with 2024. Amen. Huh? Amen. This is what I want to do. This is what Phyllis and I want to do. This is what you want to do. What? Redeem it. Not lose it. Not waste it. 
Make good use of it. Save and, and the opportunities and the time. Time down here on this earth is very, very brief. And so it's precious. And I know it's a lot of discomfort and even on so much cruelty and pain and, and all that, but it is such a short, short time. I actually asked the Lord that years ago because I've seen some things in the world that really bothered me. And I said, God, the love I have, I got from you. You put in me. You are love. How do you tolerate this pain down here? All this cruelty, all this death and destruction and curse, how do you tolerate it? Because I know you are love. And I did not expect his answer. He spoke to my heart. I don't mean to hurt a voice. He spoke to my heart. He said, Keith, it's very brief. Brief. It's very brief. To him, a thousand years is like a day. Well, a uh, hundred 20-year lifespan would then be like a couple of hours to him. And so it doesn't please him. It's not his will. But I asked him, how do you tolerate it? And he said, it's very brief from his perspective. Very, very brief. And that's how he tolerates it. But that helped us tolerate it too. But it also should help us to know, don't waste a day. So the psalmist said, teach us to number our days. We may know how, how short they are. What we don't want to do is with the Lord sustaining us and keeping us and helping us 12, year, 12 months from now, look back and go, man, we wasted that. You don't want to do that. Because it's a year you don't get back. We want to redeem it. Are y'all are y'all with me? Or are you? Yes. Do you want to redeem it? Yes. Is it possible to redeem it? Yes. Yes. Then be glad. Yes. Huh? If it can be redeemed, if it can be saved, then let's do it. Right. Let's not waste it. Because before very long, you and I'll be one of the two that's leaving. Every second. So uh, keep reading. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. How do you do that? Read the next verse. Read the next verse. Be not unwise. So if you wasted the year, would you call that unwise? Yes. Yeah. Don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The Lord showed me this yesterday. I don't know how many times I've read this. And I knew I had this on my heart to minister this morning, even days ago. But I didn't see this. He said, these three verses. How do you redeem the time? You got to understand what the will of the Lord is. And then how do you find the will of the Lord? Next verse. <laughs> Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. That's how you find out the will of God. And, and how, do, how are you filled with the Spirit? Maybe we could read the next verse. <laughs> Speaking to yourselves. <laughs> is that right? Right there. Boom, boom, boom. Glory to God. That's it. That's it. His word is amazing. It is so amazing. It's living. It's alive. You can never exhaust all the light and revelation and understanding from it. How can I redeem 2024 and not lose my opportunities and not waste a precious year. I got to find out what God's will is. Right? I got to find out what God's will is and do that 
in 24 instead of something else. Uh, some years ago, we had some kind of project going on and uh, we had spent some extra money and I thought, Lord, uh, how much should we believe on this? I mean, this seems like some extra, you know, and you'd like to have paid less on some things and what have you. And, and the Lord spoke to my heart again. He, I didn't expect it. He said, Keith, I don't care how much it costs. Just get the job done. Well, does he care about money? What, what does he care? He creates planets, right? What would he care about a few extra hundred dollars or a few extra million dollars? Well, what would that mean to him? And he helped me to see this. He said, Keith, you cannot waste money doing the will of God. <laughs> I thought, huh? Huh? Sure seems like you could. No, no, you can't. If, if what you did accomplished the will of God, it doesn't matter how much you spent on it, you, it was a good investment. You did not waste one penny. Even if you paid three times too much for stuff, you still, it was a bargain. <laughs> Why? Because no amount of money could ever be equal the worth of the eternal plan and will of God. Amen. Amen. On the other hand, if you scraped and squeezed every penny and negotiated down to the dime and saved money and saved money and did it way under budget, if it wasn't the will of God, you wasted the whole thing. The whole thing was a waste. Come on, can you see that? I don't think there'll be any rewards in heaven for whoever saved the most money. <laughs> no rewards, but there will be rewards. Oh, there will be eternal rewards for those that were a part of accomplishing the will of God, the plan and will of God. Oh, somebody say the will of God, the will of God. That's what I want. The will of God. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. One of the most evil doctrines of devils that's disrupting and destroying believers in the church is the doctrine of God is in control. Somebody said, well, isn't he? Well, if you believe that, then you believe everything that happens is somehow the will of God. Everything that did not happen is somehow the will of God. You believe, que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. And if it was meant to be, it will be. Where is that verse? Where is that scripture? You must say, well, you don't believe God's in control of everything? I know God is not controlling everything. If God was controlling everything, this place would be paradise. There would be no death. There would be no curse. There would be no sin. You want to know what God's will is? Look at Genesis. Creation before the fall. And then skip to the end. Look at Revelation. After the devil and everything's been removed and the new heaven and the new earth. That's the will of God. That's the will of God. All this death and curse and sin in the middle. That's man. That's rebellious, defiant, sinful man and evil devil. Which neither of those is the will of God. Mm -mm. The devil's tricky. Oh, he's tricky. 
Oh, he said, and this thing about God is in control. People will fight you over that. And the thing is, many times they themselves are so rebellious, they are not doing the will of God at all. But they're so adamant. Well, no, I'll tell you one thing. I've had people put their finger in, in my face and go, I'll tell you one thing, preacher. <laughs> you already know they're messed up. <laughs> God gets ready for you to do something. By God, you'll do it. <laughs> it's all they can do to keep from cussing. <laughs> That's the wrong spirit. That ain't the right spirit. <laughs> Sometimes the steam comes out of there when I said, no, he won't. <laughs> it's the devil that wants people to believe that. Because that leaves him unresisted. He can do anything he wants to in people's lives, stealing and killing and destroying. And they'll just go, well, it must have been the will of God. Won't even put up a fight. Won't even resist. No, my brother. No, my sister. To a large degree, the will of God is not being done in people's lives. Take this. If everything that happens is the will of God, why would I need to understand what the will of God is? Why, why would that even be in there? I, this don't need to be in there if nothing happens unless it's the will of God. All I got to do is wake up and see what happens. <laughs> right? And voila, it was the will of God because God's in control and nothing happens except what God does or I just believe that everything happens for a reason. Well, yeah, the reason could be you not listening. There you, go. you didn't obey God. Don't mean it's the will of God. Doesn't mean it's the plan of God. Tell me what you want for 2024. Come on, help me out. What, what do you want? Huh? You want the will of God. That's what you want. Because that's the only way we're not going to waste it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In uh, Matthew, put Matthew on the screen for us, please. Well, actually, let's do it. Go, go to Luke. This is Luke's account of the same thing. Luke 11. Luke 11. And verse... What does verse 1 say? It came to pass in a that as he was praying in a certain place. Let's just stop right there. How are you going to find out the will of God in 2024? You're going to have to do some of this. Or you won't. That's right. Jesus prayed. And he prayed a lot. Why did he do that? Did he need to pray? Y'all are quiet. Huh? Well, either that or he was doing something he didn't need to do. Huh? You got to remember, he emptied himself. Right. He became like other men. Right. That's right. And so he's functioning and operating as a man. That's right. And he prayed. Yes, he and he prayed a lot. I'm going to read you some uh, verses about him praying. You don't, don't try to turn to these. Luke 5, 7, 16, he withdrew himself in the wilderness and prayed. He would get away where there were no distractions. And where he wouldn't be interrupted. And he'd pray. Mark 135. In the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. And there he prayed. Got up early. And went where he could be uh, 
uninterrupted, not bothered, undistracted, and prayed. In uh, Luke 6, 12, it came to pass in those days, he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Did he need to do that? Yes. Yes. Yes, he did. All night? Yes. 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 Yeah, but he's Jesus. No, he's still right. he to do it. <laughs> huh? Right. Could he just make a confession? And... <laughs> no. No. Why you gotta pray? Why you gotta pray all night? Listen, listen to the very next verse. In those days, he went, this is Luke 6, 12, he went into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, so this is the rest of the story. And as soon as it was day, he called to him his disciples and of them he chose 12 and he named apostles. Why would you have that together? How'd he find out who the 12 were? Come on, can you see this? Well, if that's how he found out the will of God, how many think it's important that he get this right and not name the wrong people? Because you read the book of Revelation, these guys' names are in the foundation of the heavenly city. This is something that goes far beyond their lives or even the history of the earth. These had to be right for eternity. Is that right? Did Jesus get it right? Yeah, he did. Why? Well, he's Jesus, but he also, he prayed and he prayed more than five minutes, more than an hour. Why? Why did he keep praying? Because something kept going on with him in communion with God and he kept praying and talking to the Father about it and he kept going and he kept going and he kept going and by the time the sun was coming up, he's got it. He knows who. He knows where. He knows what. Come on, can you see this? How many think Jesus never wasted a day? Of course, he, he didn't live to see 40 on the earth. So was every one of his years precious? How many think he never wasted a day? Did he redeem the time? How'd he do it? How'd he do it? He said, he said I only do those things that please the Father. He said, I didn't come down from heaven to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Was he seeking the will of God and submitting himself to the will of God and committing to do and fulfilling to do the will of God every day of his life? Yes. Is he the best example you could ever follow? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Luke 9, 18, it came to pass when he was alone praying, his disciples came and he asked them questions. In Luke 9, it came to pass eight days after that Peter and John and James, they went up to a mountain to pray. As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment was white and glistering. And there appeared and talked to him two men, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his de decease, which he should accomplish in Jerusalem. You talk about a glorious experience. But how did it start? Why did they go up on the mountain? To pray. And it was while they were praying that this happened. What if they never prayed? Well, uh, in Luke 11, you, you still have that? Luke 11, verse 1, it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, What? Lord, teach us to pray. <laughs> Why? Because he's praying all the time. They see him pray. They're listening to him pray. They know. He says, guys, I'm going to go pray for a while. 
And that might be all night long. They're around this week after week. And so they say, well, Lord, you know, John uh, taught his guys how to pray. You teach us how to pray. And he gave them, and it's recorded for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. What we call the Lord's Prayer. But it's actually the Lord teaching us right. how to pray. And what did he say? He said, when you pray, what if you don't? <laughs> huh? When you pray, not those of you that are prayers and have the ministry of prayer. Everybody needs to pray. Everybody is supposed to pray, need to pray. He said, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You start your prayer out with reverence and respect and honor. Remind yourself who you're talking to. Not Joe down the block. The Almighty on the throne. Remind yourself who you're talking to. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And what? I mean right off the bat. Is what? Because if you pray in contrary to the will of God, that's a wasted prayer. Right? If you invest in into things, into people who come up with their own idea and it wasn't a plan or vision from God, that's wasted seed. That's wasted labor. It's wasted travel. Wasted expending of energy. Oh, friend, there is so much wasted motion and effort and spending in this world. So much of it that it's just total vanity. It'll amount to nothing. Nobody will ever know about it a few years from now. Oh, but he or she that does the will of God, it lasts forever. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Now, every part of this prayer is amazing and wonderful and the light and revelation inexhaustible, but just on this part right here. If the will of God is going to happen, whether or not, why should I pray that it would be done? If nothing happens except it's the will of God, then there's no point in me praying. If it's the will of God, it's going to happen, whether I pray or whether I don't. If it's not the will of God, it ain't going to happen no matter how much I pray or I don't. But that's not true. I said, that's not true. That's men's religious ideas. It's actually doctrines of demons sent to confuse the church and rob the church. The head of the church, Jesus, said pray. Didn't he say pray? And he said, and when you pray, one of the big things you pray about is the will of God. And you pray that God's will would be done. Why you need to pray that? Because unless somebody seeks it and desires it and wants to do it, it won't be done in case after case. It won't be done. The will of God is not going to automatically happen in your life in 2024 or in mine. For most of the world, it will not happen. Go to Ephesians. Let me give you some more scripture because some of these uh, traditional beliefs, they die hard. I heard one of those holy cows moo just a moment ago. I, I poked him. I poked him and he, he went moo. Yeah, but I just believe. You hear that word, I just believe? Again, that's an indication. Based on what? Based on what? Well, I've just always believed. Hear that word, just? Yeah. I've just always believed. That, that indicates it's based on nothing. It's just something you decided to believe. 
the only sure foundation is it is written. It is written. Right? And yeah, talking about the other side of it, there are some big things that are going to happen. Whether you think so or not. Right? There are. But it doesn't mean you get to be a part of it. Or me. If we won't listen. There are some big things concerning God's kingdom and his plan that are going to happen. And if you and I are not available, he'll use somebody else. If you and I won't listen, he'll use somebody else. But to say that everything that's happening in everybody's life is going to be the will of God, no way. Not even close. No. Unless you seek him and you want him in your life and you listen, you won't have the will of God. You'll have something else. Ephesians 2 and 12. Ephesians 2.12, he's talking about before you got saved. At that time, you were without Christ. Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Strangers from the covenant of promise. Now, now look at this. Having what? No. no hope. Is that the will of God? No, no hope. Why would you have no hope? Because you're without Christ. Can you see that? No hope and what's your condition in the world? God controlling your life? No. You, God's not anywhere around you. He's not involved in your life at all. You are without Christ, without God in the world, no hope. That's not God governing your life. That's God not involved in your life at all. And the devil doesn't want people to see that because they want them to blame God for everything. Amplified. Put up the amplified of that. Man, I could use an extra hour this morning. Are you in a, you in a hurry? Or? If this helped us to make the best use of 2024, it'd be worth staying all day. He said, remember, at that time you were separated from Christ, utterly estranged, outlawed. And he said, uh, no share in the sacred compacts. Last, last verse, last sentence, you had no hope and you were in the world without God. If you're in this world, this evil, cursed, death-filled, sin-filled, crazy people-filled world without God, you are hopeless. You got no future. You got no hope. And you can blame God for everything going wrong in your life, but you're deceived. The problem is God's not in your life. He's not involved in it at all. Don't you remember in Revelation, the Lord said, behold, I stand at the door. Huh? And did he say, I'm coming in and I'm going to do what I want. No matter what you think. No, he is not coming in. Why knock? It's up to you whether you want him in your life or not. If you don't, he is not barging in and forcing his will and plan on your life. He is not going to do that. And so all the stuff that happens in your life without him has nothing to do with him. You can get mad at him if you want to, but you're being stupid. The problem is he's not in your life. Because when God's in your life, <laughs> when God's really in control, whoo, you got peace that passes understanding. You got joy that just won't end. You got victory after victory after victory. When God's in it, it's good. It's very good and keeps getting better when God's involved. But with most of the world, he is not involved. They are in the world without God. Whew. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, 
I have some instructions for you. I believe from the Lord. I'm not going to ask you to do these things because it's not for me. It'd be for you. But it'll take some time in your life. Some of your time. Uh Uh-oh, did I lose somebody already? (laughs) Uh, Go to Colossians. I'm I'm not quite done with this. I'm trying to move too quick. Go to Colossians, the first chapter, please. Will the will of God automatically be done in your life regardless of what you do or don't do? It will not. So if that's so, I need to find the will of God. Right? How do I find it? Well, for instance, you know, Romans 12 said that uh, we need to uh, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God by the renewing of our mind. We we need to find out what he says. And yes, from his word, but also there are specifics about you and where you should work and your family and I, that you're not going to find a scripture that names you and names that, but that's what the Holy Spirit's going to help you with. He's going to show you these details. The Bible says, that's what Jesus said, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you another comforter and he's going to stay with you forever and he will teach you all things and he'll lead and guide you into all the truth and he'll bring to your remembrance everything I say to you and he'll show you things to come. Somebody say, he will show you. He will show you. He will show you. He will show you. Jesus said he will He'll show you. So say, he'll show me. Who will? But you got to want to see. And so that's going to involve, you know, Jesus said, um, in talking about praying, he said, ask, it'll be given you. Seek you'll find, knock, it'll be opened. And that's what he was doing himself in prayer. He is seeking the Father. He's asking about some things. And he's knocking. And if Jesus needed to do it, how about these folks over here? I said, if Jesus needed to do this, Hours at a time, every day, sometimes all night long. Mrs. says, well, I, I don't have time to do that. Well, then you got time to waste. <laughs> You'll realize later that you have wasted whole months, maybe whole years. Because even though you worked hard and it wasn't something God wanted you to do. It's well worth your time because it helps you to not waste time. One of our patriarchs, who was that that said that? Uh, He lived many years ago. Uh, He said this. uh, He said, I have so much to do today. I'm going to spend the first three hours in prayer. Huh? That's a man who knows. Is that right? He knows the more you got to do, the more important it is you don't waste an hour. Right? So what do you need? I need to find out how to do this. I need to find out what I should be doing. And you'll find out that when you eliminate all the stuff you're not supposed to be doing, man, your calendar just cleared up. (laughs) And now you got plenty of time to do what he wants you to do. (laughs) Colossians 1, verse 1. This is Paul speaking by the Spirit. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, Do not cease to pray for you and to desire. What's he praying about? 
What's he praying about? He said, we're praying, pray always. That's a lot of praying. What are you doing all this praying about, Paul? That, that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Oh, somebody say his will, his will, his will. Does it get any more important than his will? It, it doesn't. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Does that sound like a good year? That's a good year. Skip down to chapter 4, verse 2, Colossians 4, 4 2. What's he say? In case you forgot since chapter one. <laughs> you got to keep on praying, brother. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. You need to do at least as much giving thanks as you do praying and asking or petitioning. Verse three, with all what? Pray for us too. Well, hold on now, Paul. You do a lot of praying. You ain't got it covered. <laughs> now you want us to pray for you too? Now I know some of this sounds humorous, but you do realize most church going people barely pray at all. And some have believed erroneous stuff. All oh, grace, 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 Grace has done it all. No, grace has not done all your praying for you the rest of your life. No, it hasn't. Well, it'll be done, you know, because God, I just believe God's in control. Do you see how convenient that is? Then you can be lazy and do nothing. But it's, it's not in agreement with Scripture. It's not what Jesus did. It's not how he lived. It's not how Paul lived. It's not how Peter lived. So when did all this change? No, that a door of utterance would be open to us. He should pray for us too. Verse 12, same chapter. Verse 12, Epaphras, he says, is one of you. He's always laboring fervently for you. In prayers. Why do we need all this praying? Read the rest of it. He tells you right here why, what he's praying about. Why he's praying. Why is he, what's he praying about? That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Because this evil world is a noisy distracting, tempting, confusing place. And you got flesh and I got flesh. And the flesh wants to be lazy. And, and if you just never pray, never get in the word, and you just yield to your flesh, then you'll be easily distracted. And you'll go off on this tangent. You'll go off on that tangent. And it's only days and weeks and months later you realize, Oh, no, I wasted that. I didn't need to be in there. Well, whose fault is that? Them? They taught me in it? No, you. You didn't pray. Right. You're supposed to be led for yourself. That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Ready for your instructions? Okay. Oh man, this is another two hour message right here. <laughs> so Lord help me to sync it up, summarize it. Uh, three things. Over the course of the coming months, I'm going to encourage you to do. And it's in line with what the Lord's been giving Phyllis about being led in those things. And I believe this is not just coming from her or from me. I believe this is the Holy Spirit. And we should all be growing and developing. 
and not just be carnal and certainly not just waste our precious days down here. You've got to distinguish between your head and your heart. And in order to do that, there needs to be spiritual activity that is not mental. And many folks have never gotten the difference between the two. Anybody remember Proverbs 3, uh, 5, trust in the Lord? Yes. What? All With all of your heart. heart. Lean not to your own. So they're not the same, are they? They're not the same. Now, uh, you have inspired utterance in another tongue. And there's, in, we call that other tongues. An inspired utterance in a known tongue, that is prophecy. Most folks don't understand what prophecy is. Prophecy, most prophecy is not foretelling. It is not prediction. It's inspired utterance in a language you know. But it's not coming out of your head. It's not mental. It's coming out of your spirit. And every believer can do this. You don't have to be a prophet. The scripture said, 1 Corinthians, for you may all prophesy one by one. Is he saying you can all predict? No. But simple prophecy is speaking unto men edification, exhortation, and comfort. It comforts, it builds up, it, it encourages. That's what simple prophecy, if I can use that term, is. What you got to do is, is learn the difference between your head and your heart. Head and your heart. Got to learn the difference. And so I believe this is an exercise that will help you. We have, uh, well, uh, put, put Ephesians back on the screen there where we started with. Ephesians 5 and uh, 16. 5.16. How are we going to redeem the time? Next verse. Huh? We've got to find out the will of God. How are we going to find out the will of God? Next verse. Be filled with the Spirit. Somebody says, well, I, I am. You know, I spoke in tongues 20 years ago. That does not mean you are full right now. No, that's misunderstanding. He's writing to people that spoke in tongues before. And the language here literally could be translated, be being filled. And you can see the same folks that got filled in Acts 2 got filled again a couple of chapters later. There's one initial reception. There should be many subsequent refillings. Like I said, two hours. Uh, how am I filled with the Spirit? Next verse. Speaking to yourselves. In what? Psalms and hymns. And spiritual songs. Spiritual, is, that, is that only for preachers? No. Is that only for those in the music ministry? No. no, he's writing to the saints at the church of Ephesus. He's writing to everybody. This is everybody. Somebody says, well, I, I can't sing. You sure can. <laughs> We're not saying you should record, but... <laughs> You can sing. Everybody can sing. And when you lift your voice to sing, it takes you to another level. This is what I'm going to encourage you to do. What do you mean? How will I do it? Easy. Take the 23rd Psalm and the 91st Psalm. And go over it, and 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 over it, hundreds and hundreds of times in these coming months. Are y'all with me? Yes. Do not try to memorize it. Are y'all with me, church? Yes. Me memorization is mental. 
That's not what you want. No. Now, there are good apps. I've had a Bible app for years that uh, I'll, I'll play a chapter over and listen to it and many times. And so you, you can listen to it, read it, say it. But you want to go over it and over it till eventually it comes out of you without you thinking. And why the Psalms? Because we know this is anointed. We know this is the right spirit. We know this is the will of God. This is the spirit of prophecy in all these Psalms. And Every one of us need this in us. Psalm 23, don't think you know all about it, is about being led, being fed, being protected. How about Psalm 91? Uh, protection, keeping, finishing your course. Being delivered from any bad thing that could ever happen to you. I mean, all the verses, it just... Mm. And we're not talking about a lot of real estate scripture wise. What is it like six verses or something in Psalm 23 and like 16 in Psalm 91. These are, these are not big. But you don't, look at your neighbor and say, don't memorize. Don't memorize. This is not mental. Just keep, keep going over it and over it and over it. Why? You got to keep going over it until your mind gets quiet. And you're not thinking about it. And it's just in your spirit. So we're we're exercising to our spirit. So our spirit, we become more aware of our spirit. And therefore the Holy Spirit in our spirit. And and not understanding led. Not mental. Spiritual. Do you think you can do that? Yes. Psalm 23. Somebody says, well, I already know that. No, you don't. (laughs) Psalm 91. And just ever how the Lord leads you to do it, but go over them and over them and over them over the next weeks and months, scores of times, hundreds of times. What are we wanting to do? Until it just comes out of my spirit without me thinking or having to try to remember not mental. Then here's another thing. The scripture talks about the hour of prayer. Hmm? Remember Jesus said in the garden, talking to Peter and the guys, couldn't you watch with me? One hour? When he was praying. And, and, and the Bible said when Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, Hour of prayer. Somebody say hour of prayer. There's hour of prayer. I want to encourage you. At least once a week. Pray one hour. Uninterrupted. In other tongues. Are y'all with me? At least. One time a week. And when I say uninterrupted. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? This is not you reading scriptures half the hour. That's not praying. This is not you writing notes for 30 minutes. That's not praying. Now if something comes to you and you feel like you need to write it down, do it. But that takes five seconds. And you keep praying in tongues. Uninterrupted. No texting. Now like I said, we're going to find out if we're serious about this or not. Do you want to develop or not? Yes. What will I be praying about, Brother Keith? Do I need to give you the answer? <laughs> what, are, what are you praying about? You're praying about, is there anything you need to learn yes. about God's will yes. and plan? Yes. You say, thank you, God. You start off with thanksgiving. Thank you, Father. Giving me life. Giving me time. I want to do your will. I don't want to waste my days and my year. I want to do your will. Holy Spirit, help me. 
Give me utterance to pray and to ask and to say and if every, everything, anything I need to about your will for me right now, and then start praying in tongues. Amen. And do it uninterrupted Amen. for an hour. Yes. That's also spiritual exercise that'll make you more aware of your spirit and learning the difference between that and your head. And if you want to go further, I got one more thing for you. Those were the two main things. Everybody clear? Yes. Yes, what was the first one? Help me out. Help me out. Psalm 23. 93. Psalm 91. Do what? Memorize them. No. 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 Go over them again. I. If you hadn't done this kind of thing before, th this is how I live. This is what I do. You know, when I, uh, like, if I get something on my heart about a message, a lot of times the night before, if there's a chapter or something, I'll go over that chapter, I'll listen to it over and over and over and over again, and you will get so much revelation. I mean, it just, oh, you'll start seeing things you hadn't seen, and it really starts showing up when this head finally gets quiet. Quiet. And what was the other thing? Pray. One hour. Once a week at least. At least once a week. Uninterrupted. Uninterrupted. Praying mostly in other tongues. Why? Because you don't know what you should pray for as you ought concerning the will of God, you can believe in the Holy Spirit to help you. And this, the last thing goes along with this. The Lord gave me this years ago. Man, it, it really works. If you want to get filled with the Spirit, even get drunk in the Spirit, if you've never been, need to be. Sing Psalm 146 through Psalm 150 at one time. Take you approximately 10 minutes. You can read, they're very short. Psalm 146, 147, 148, 149, 150. Psalm 146 through 150, they all start with, Praise ye the Lord! <laughs> Every one of them. But you can go, praise ye the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Ha <laughs> ha! Now, is everybody listening? Why? These, these words, these psalms are anointed. Mm. They are anointed utterance in a language you understand. Mm -hmm. Sing them out. And then when you finish Psalm 150, again. no, oh. sing Psalm 151. <laughs> <laughs> So we say, well, there ain't no Psalm 51. Exactly. <laughs> That's your Amen. new song. Amen. Your new song. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. Huh? Yeah. Your new song. Just, yeah. just sing it. Let it rip. Just, yes. just sing it. You know, do it by yourself where you don't have to be conscientious about any of it. It doesn't matter if it rhymes or if the pitch or tone. Forget about all that. We're talking about spiritual. Spiritual activity. Sing Psalm 146 through Psalm 150. I'm telling you, it won't take you, even if you took your time and, and really sang it, it probably wouldn't take you 15, 20 minutes. You can read them in like seven minutes. 
but they're anointed. And that same, what you want is to minister by the same spirit that David ministered. So that, what we're talking about these Psalms, that makes you familiar with the Holy Spirit. And there's no question, well, is that really the Spirit or not? This is the Holy Spirit. You don't have to wonder about that. Stand on your feet. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Phyllis, would you come? Let's do this at the beginning of this new, new year. You got something you want to say? No. Okay. I didn't know what you wanted. Uh, you, you're prepared. I'm prepared. I know, I know. <laughs> to do the will of God. Whatever. That's it. Let's all submit ourselves under the mighty hand of God and commit ourselves to doing His will in this new year. Say it out loud, Father God. Father God. I am yours. I, am yours. I, belong, to you. I belong to you. You have redeemed me. You have, redeemed me. You have saved me. You have and you are mine. And your banner over me is love. And your will for me. And your plan for me. Is good. Always good. Only good. So we submit ourselves. Under your mighty hand. Oh great God. And we say. Your will, Your will be done, be done. In, my life, in my life, in our lives, in our, lives, in our, churches, in our churches, our ministries, our, businesses, our, businesses, our businesses, our families. Our families. We, say, we say, not my will, not another man's will, not, man's not another woman's will, will but your will, your will, your, will, your, will, your perfect plan be done in my life in our lives today tomorrow all the days of 2024 and beyond we ask for grace whereby we may serve you well honorably in Jesus name Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, lift your hands. Lift your praise. Lift your thanks. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We, uh, we don't know who's in the house. Phyllis, would you lead in a prayer of receiving the Lord, a recommitment? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we lift our lives up to you, Father. Kind and that's the first place that we serve you. Father, we pray for each and every person under the sound of our voices, and we say, say this with me. Father, I commit my heart to you, and I give my life to you. I say, Jesus, I say, Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Lord. And from this day forward, from this day forward I will serve you I will serve with all my heart. All my heart. I call you, I call you Lord, Lord and, King and King and Savior, and Savior of, my life. of my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, Hallelujah. for saving me. Hallelujah. Now thank him for Hallelujah. It. Thank you, thank Hallelujah. you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Altar workers, come to the front if you would. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or, 
Are you coming back to the Lord today? Don't rush out. Come down to the front. Tell somebody. You need to make a, a confession in front of somebody and not be ashamed that you are belonging to the Lord now. So, uh, how many think they're going to do some of these things? Huh? What, what do you think? It'll help you. Glory to God. And it gives God so much more access into your life to, to lead and guide you. And uh, this year, 2024, can be the greatest year we've ever had. It can be the most fruitful. We can have the most miracles. Is that right? We can get the most done. Praise God. Praise God. Time is short. And we're not wasting it. Praise God. What are we going to sing as we go? Yes, Lord, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. Hallelujah. To your will and to your will. I'll